Yo guys, welcome back to another episode of Talk Flow. This is episode 19 and as you can see, again, we have another guest. This time we have Arno Ross um, and many of you probably know him. You know, he's a YouTuber in the web flow slash design industry. And um, yeah, we're going to be, you know, just having a great chat about Webflow and how, you know, Arno got started with everything. So, um, yeah, Arno, thank you very much for jumping on. Um, why don't you, you thank know, thank you so much for having me. Audience. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me, man. It's going to be good. Awesome. So well, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Like, tell them, you know, who you are, what you do, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sounds good. So for those of you who don't know me, hello, my name is Arno Ross. I'm a designer, content creator based out of uh, Barcelona in Spain. And people might probably know me from, from YouTube. Um, I do a lot of content based on Webflow, based on Figma, based on um, design in general. Um, I just got into YouTube like not even two years ago, so it's super new still, but things are going great. Um, subscribers, views, and all that is looking up, so it's it's good. <laughs> it's all positive, you know? So it's, it's all I can ask for, really. It's in a yeah awesome yeah so um just, just like you know we, we with talk flow we always like to start you know from the very very beginning so awesome. why don't you tell yeah. us like where did everything start you know were mm-hmm. you in you know uni for design or did you just stumble across yeah. it tell me how everything got started so everything really got started um like how far in the beginning do you want to go like seven years old or like Bro. 18 <laughs> as far back as you want man preferably from the very right. beginning like yeah sure you know. i mean i've okay i've always been into uh, art into design all of that um and when i got to i guess high school or whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. i had the choice of okay i've always been into art always been into design what do i what do you go into now right do you go into mm-hmm. industrial design do you go into like graphic design do you go into like web design and at the time, there wasn't really any like web design, like schools or anything like that. There wasn't really like a big thing around it. So I basically decided to go into industrial design, which is like the design of like physical, physical objects, you know. Mm-hmm. And I quickly found out that there are people that are way more passionate about it than I am. <laughs> and I found <laughs> out that, you know, people, people's entire like life is industrial design and is designing and building 3d objects and i just wasn't really in that world you know i didn't really have that passion going into it so i found it difficult to like stay entertained and stay like giving a shit you know so Mm -hmm. ideally i i started doing um freelancing on the side for graphic design and other other like web design stuff that i was really interested in like doing logos things like that and then i started getting into web design and i started designing maybe like my portfolio and then I started in Webflow and I started um, start I started to like see how things could be built and I th- found it really interesting mm-hmm. and then I think it was during COVID um, I needed or I was working with my brothers because I have two brothers and we wanted to build a small SaaS right like a small no code okay. SaaS and I didn't know anything about building websites and do I don't know anything about that and so we looked into options and we looked into pricing and, you know, we were like super broke. <laughs> so we're like, okay, what's the cheapest way we can do this without, <laughs> without yeah. like killing ourselves, you know, cause it might not work. So mm-hmm. we, we looked into a bubble in the beginning. All uh, right. Bubble was the first, my, my first um, stint with no code and web design and all that. I'd, tr- I'd done like Wix and WordPress, all that, but bubble was like the first like real SaaS builder kind of thing. And we, quick, mm-hmm. we quickly found out that it was pretty shit. It didn't have a lot of integrations. It didn't, <laughs> it's just the truth. It, it just wasn't, at least at the time, it wasn't really good. I'm not sure how it's okay. doing now, but at the time it, was, it wasn't good. And mm-hmm. we built an entire thing on Bubble and then we realized it was bad. So we needed to scrap it and rebuild it in Webflow. And so that forced okay. me to build and learn Webflow for the very first time. And it was just like, that's it from there, you know, fell in love with like the the tutorials that the guy was making um you know like the typical really funny mm-hmm. ones and yeah. i was like okay this community is going to be something big someday you know like this is worth like getting invested in because it's obviously going to be around for a very long time like they've made mm-hmm. sure of that so it's 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 a good idea to to really learn how to how to use it properly and how to make a great website with this because there's a lot of potential here you know 
So that's pretty mm-hmm. much the beginning. <laughs> and then I just de- dove more into it. Um, I recently graduated from uni and now I'm full-time uh, freelancer and web design slash developer, whatever you want to call it, slash content creator, slash side hustle entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a little <laughs> bit of everything, you know, but yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much awesome. how I got started. Right. So what, what, what did you do in uni, by the way? Industrial design. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. And um, when did you graduate? You said recently. Yeah. Um, what years? <laughs> I, was like, 20, <laughs> I think 2021. Yeah. Last, right, so you, last you're, summer. You're quite young then, isn't it? So how old are you? Fresh, I'm fresh out, the, fresh out the gates. Uh, I'm 21. No way. You're 21. And I'm 20. That's crazy, yeah. man. You look a you look a bit older than that, right? Around like 24, yeah, 25. Yeah, it's the beard, probably. Yeah, it's definitely the beard. I get that a lot as yeah. well. Man. But um, yeah, so so you said you started. Um, I think this is like the, the story with many freelancers, right? Like they start Webflow during lockdown, which is mm-hmm. how I like. That's the time where I started Webflow. But then, mm-hmm. when did you start content? As soon as you start Webflow, as well? like how? What was the initial? you know um how why did you get started with content you know did you get started you know in line mm-hmm. with when you found webflow or did you start content a bit after so i started doing content on youtube when mm-hmm. I, I think i'm thinking I'm mixing up the dates here and the, the timeline because i started i started content on youtube during lockdown okay so i definitely didn't start webflow during lockdown i think i started webflow in like oh, 2009 right. I think I started in like the summer of 2017 or something like that. So like five years ago. Okay, so that's... Maybe. Oh, okay, 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 cool. Okay. Cool. I started content creation because uh, I enrolled in a Rand Segal course in one of the one of his mm-hmm. courses. And there was a, a module there where it was mm-hmm. how to gain leads, right? I was struggling as a freelancer. Okay. And it was, as, as I'm sure we all do and we all have... And it mm-hmm. was how can we start gaining leads and how can we start um, getting clients to come to us instead of sending out 10,000 cold emails, getting ignored. You know, if it's a lot more hot, mm-hmm. the leads a lot hotter if they directly just invoice you, you know, or in, inbound mm-hmm. to you. And one of those was, okay, I do, I have a YouTube channel. This is Ryan Segal speaking. I have a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. I post content on Instagram. I don't really do Twitter. I don't do TikTok. So it's all about like finding the the platform that works for you and i've always really liked youtube i've always watched Mm -hmm. tons of creators and spend hours and hours so i was like fuck it um it's now or never either i do this or i like always spend my life wondering like what happened or or, like what could have happened you know so Mm -hmm. i decided to to take a leap i decided to um to create the channel i decided to buy all the gear (laughs) preemptively you know i bought like a like a, a mic and a stand and a light and all that. And in the beginning it was it was rough, you know, I didn't I didn't post a single video for like 9 months until um mm-hmm. like from I created my channel and then and 9 months later I posted the first video okay. just because I was so scared about like what would people say, what would they think, you know, like the typical yeah. like, oh my god, typical. they're going to fucking Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's something <laughs> we all struggle it, with, you know, that's Yeah. Yeah, definitely. dude, it's 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 something it's something normal you know we're all we've all grown yeah. up around like judgmental people probably so it's not the farthest thing in the world to imagine that they could laugh mm-hmm. at you <laughs> yeah but but i mean at the end of the day like as 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 harsh as it is uh like fuck it you know it's it's, mm-hmm. it's my life you know i i saw this qu- this tw- tweet or quote this quote on on instagram that said um it, it was something like you guys are caring about the most irrelevant people in the world and like you're basing your entire like Mm. goals and dreams off of like what these lame ass people are doing and saying and thinking and that just kind of was like dude absolutely like fuck all these people yeah (laughs) like there's no way i care (laughs) yeah you know yeah i mean i think it it was like the the same thing for me when i because i started all of this whatever i'm doing during lockdown and during lockdown Mm. i wasn't going to school I wasn't really meeting mm-hmm. anybody. I was kind of just sitting alone in my house. So I didn't really have that external influence. So everything I was doing was actually intrinsic. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I didn't. Yeah. And, and I think that was a blessing in disguise because I didn't, you know, get scared of anyone thinking about, 
oh, he's not on YouTube and whatever. To be honest, most of the people that I know don't even know that I have YouTube or LinkedIn yeah. or whatever. So no, same, yeah, um, same. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I. We, yeah, I mean, I, I've, sorry, I've posted sorry, on like, sorry. yeah, I think there mm-hmm. might be like a slight delay, but um, yeah, there I've is posted delay, on yeah. on LinkedIn and um, and Twitter and stuff like that. People can find me, but mm-hmm. for the most part, I'm not like going back to my school and being like, hey, guys, by the way, yeah, you know, I started, <laughs> you know, but I feel like that's that's the case with a lot of people. Um, people started their their YouTube channel or their Instagram or their TikTok, whatever, during lockdown. So they have. Mm-hmm they kind of didn't have that external influence, like you said. And yeah. that's something extremely important because you don't have that initial pressure right off the gate to create something that other people are going to like. You just start creating for yourself. You start creating things that, that mm-hmm. you might enjoy that you think other people might enjoy. So that's something, I mean, that's something I can relate with as well, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so just we we talked about, you know, how, content you know starting content is, is is has a bit of you know um mm-hmm. activation energy in a way that you have to get over but i think creating content i know first and to be honest i think i'm lucky because my kind of content is not really too difficult to create you know mm-hmm. just jump on a, a, a live stream not barely yeah. any editing and then i post it right but for you i want to ask you like how i'm guessing creating content must be difficult for you right because of the type of videos you, you create you know you probably have to you probably had to learn editing, I believe, and then you probably had mm-hmm. to, you know, edit every video. Like, how, how, yeah, how is like the content creator <clears throat> lifestyle? Is it difficult, or especially because you have to balance it with your freelance work, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in the beginning, I I had to learn content creation. Uh, I guess yeah, I had to learn content creation. I had to learn editing. Um, Mm-hmm. I had to, dude. If you see my, if you take a look at my Notion, it's a, it's a fucking disaster. <laughs> I have like pages of like. <laughs> I dove into content um, creators. I dove into their videos, their descriptions, their the way they title their videos, mm-hmm. the way their thumbnails look, the way their 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 videos are graded. And I just took screenshots of everything and I started like copying mm-hmm. them and I started like um, learning about how they're doing it, what they're doing it. And so in the beginning, it was a lot of that. You know, it was a lot of like immersing myself with with these with these people. Um, learning their editing styles, learning why they put a a a transition here why they did an audio here why they put music starting here and that was a lot of it you know it was a lot of like dissecting videos like minute by minute understanding why people did things and in the end i started um editing trying my own style starting my own my own thing and i mean as as you can tell in my first few videos they're, they're pretty terrible um but i started learning about editing i started learning about color grading and stuff like that i mean i really mm-hmm. cared about color grading and making sure that my videos looked professional right right from the beginning mm-hmm. but it was it was kind of silly because now i don't even color grade my videos um <laughs> which is which is funny to say but um like in the beginning i, I was just filming with my phone in my mm-hmm. in my parents house during lockdown but now i have like an actual camera i i don't edit my videos anymore thank god i send them out to to an editor that i that i hired which is awesome um, and I highly recommend it as well because it's it's like the mm-hmm. ultimate hack of productivity. You know, like you you sit it down, is, yeah. you you think about the videos, you do all like all like the masterminding that you need to do and you need to be there for. But mm-hmm. if there's a if there's a part of it that you don't need to be active and present, and if you can outsource it, then definitely outsource it. You know, like mm-hmm. editing is one of those things where I knew that there's there's people that are out there that are better than me at editing. I'm not. I'm not an editor by any mm. stretch of the imagination and finding an editor to edit my videos was like the, the best thing I, I did because it, it allowed me to balance YouTube with freelance, with side projects, with other things. And, and honestly, it's, it's been, it's been incredible. So it's not cheap definitely, but right now like YouTube is, is like compensating for it because AdSense and affiliates mm-hmm. and all that. And so it's, it's, it's like half compensating for it, for the costs. Right. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to ask you about your goals behind, you know, your content. Um, mm-hmm. You mentioned that, you know, you you're watching Ryan Seiko's videos and you mentioned that you need a platform. What, what was is, is your goal with your content? I'm guessing or has it changed? Right. Like um, mm-hmm. was your is your goals for your content, you know, getting clients for, you know, building an exposure to get clients or is it, yeah. you know, to, you know, 
help freelancers and eventually down the line you do something with that or monetize that in some way mm -hmm. yeah and my goals have definitely changed you know in the beginning it was a lot about mm -hmm. um make content so that clients potential clients can see me and they understand that okay this guy knows how to build websites but mm -hmm. further down the line and where i am now I'm, i actually want to leave all the freelancing behind at some point um only focus on youtube focus on making like regular videos maybe like four times a week or something crazy and like really dive into into that because it, i just enjoy it more i i think it's it's a better it's a better lifestyle for me um mm -hmm. dealing with with freelance and clients is great but don't get me wrong i mean it's a lot of work it's a lot of like um mm -hmm. you still have a boss at the end of the day you know <laughs> even, even if you're a freelancer the boss is your is your client yeah you know so ideally what i'm what i'm doing now is i'm is i'm building um no code sasses is that a word sasses um i'm building no code sasses at at scale hopefully and trying to trying to bring that to the world and i'm trying to build products that will help the de designers and problems that i've had before and so i'll be i'll be trying to release those in the upcoming months if not weeks so that's that's kind of the idea of the channel you know i want to focus primarily on making content that people will will enjoy and mm -hmm. also content that will help people because there is there there already is an ocean of content of like tutorials for example right mm -hmm. people already do that there's there's webflow designers and developers that are that are better than me and there always will be i'm not the best webflow guy in the world you know but i think where i win and where i can sort of mm -hmm. fit into the into the world of, of youtube webflow is highlighting things that are more entertaining you know being more of a more, being more of an entertainer rather than mm -hmm. like a teacher and sort of blurring that line a little bit because you know it's it's youtube it's not like a classroom you know i can i can be a little bit mm -hmm. more like i can swear you know i can do all these things mm -hmm. and it's, it's like oh my gosh he's not like t ricks like timothy ricks like that yeah. guy's that guy's a genius i'm never gonna surpass him mm -hmm. in my skills but maybe i might be more more like outgoing yeah i don't know you know <laughs> like there's there's also a market for that so so i think that's if, if i answered your question you know i kind of went a little bit off the rails there but yeah yeah that makes sense um i think i think of that it, it was kind of the same for me as well when i was first starting mm -hmm. youtube or, or even linkedin like um because i'm quite heavy on linkedin it's like when i was first posting i was like you know what i don't really care about the community as bad as it sounds and i was like you know what i just want to build my exposure to get clients or whatever right i wasn't really yeah, doing anything you know for the community or any i didn't even know it existed or whatever right so but then once i started you know to get a bit of following and things started growing mm -hmm. I was like, you know what like i kind of enjoy it and that's when i jumped onto youtube and then yeah um like i think like we're, we're, we're planning on doing a bunch of stuff with this channel like you know it's it's, it's grown from just you know one little goal of let's build up a little exposure so clients or potential clients trust us a little more mm -hmm. and it's grown yep. into like a bunch of more goals like that is not even related to that to that at all so i do understand where you're coming mm -hmm. from like um um yeah we've got like a bunch of things planned for youtube as well so yeah um i actually I just 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 to move on um i wanted to ask you about your freelance work currently so you mentioned that you know you you want to kind of reduce that so how how's mm -hmm. that looking right now and how was that looking you know for the past couple of years yeah, so I've always really been into freelancing. Freelancing has always been like the the thing that I wanted to do, even at like uh, mm -hmm. eighteen years old or whatever, um, just because of the idea of of being able to work anywhere in the world and not having a set boss and having to like, wake up super early mm -hmm. for work and all that. So I wanted to avoid that from from a young age, and that's that's where I found freelancing, and that's where I found the the beauty of that. And <clears throat> excuse me, and one of the things that that i've found while going full-time into freelancing is that you know it's it still is like having a boss in in some respect mm -hmm. you know the way the way i have my my freelance um situation right now and and hopefully it changes in the future but the way the way i have it right now is more of a um it's almost like like a full-time job basically you know it's a retainer mm -hmm. contract with like really heavy goals and heavy deadlines and so it's like you need to show up every day you need to do this you need to do this you need to do this mm -hmm. so it's it's very much still a job at the end of the day and so that's kind mm -hmm. of where i want to get away from that and you know the the benefit of of having something like youtube is that it can scale it can it can grow and so maybe a few months down the line or a few years down the line 
I have one project that pays me 100K instead of doing um, 10 projects that pay me 10K, you know, for example. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, th I feel like that's, that's the benefit with YouTube and that's, that's kind of the goal there. And if I can, I want to reduce freelancing just because of the workload, just because I want to spend more time with my girlfriend. <laughs> I want to spend time traveling. I want to do, I want to do other things, you know, like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm young as fuck. I can, I can go out and travel if I want to, like, I don't have kids or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so if, if YouTube can allow me to, to have a more passive income and more, more freedom in my lifestyle, then, then that's, that's primarily where I want to, to take it, you know? And mm -hmm. if that means I need to build a SaaS and I need to sell it to my, to my audience and it'll help them, then it's like a win-win, you know, it's, mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you're, you're making money, obviously you're, you're building a SaaS, Okay. But then it's helping people. And so there's a, there's a Venn diagram there that it's like mm -hmm. that area in the middle is like, it's fulfillment, you know, you're making money mm -hmm. while you're helping people and people take a lot of value from the products that you're building. So why, why wouldn't you want to scale that? Why wouldn't you want to make that your, mm -hmm. your prime thing? And so that's, that's kind of where I'm, where I'm headed at the minute. And I hope it grows and I hope it, people find actual value from it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see in the upcoming months, I guess. I can't, I can't say too much. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think I, I, I like your point about freedom, right? Like your main goal is freedom. And I was actually mm -hmm. speaking with, I'm not sure if you know, um, Koisa. Um, he's on Twitter quite a lot. He's another workflow designer. And um, yeah, so I was, I was actually met up with him yesterday in central London. And we're just talking mm -hmm. and he was telling me as well, like, you're super young, like just take as many holidays as you can you know and it's great that and it is great that we are developers like or freelancers sorry mm -hmm. we can yeah. literally work whatever we want you know i can take out you know i can go to italy for six months right now and my work will literally not be affected at all it's yeah. um you know it's, it's crazy it's so i think yeah especially you know i think that's the beauty of it as well um mm -hmm. and especially since you know we're young like 21 20 is like we mm -hmm. should use as much of that as possible you know because responsibilities, you never know when they're gonna come, right? We're young, we don't have kids, we don't. Hopefully, you, you know, do we don't have major responsibilities. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully but we don't really have major responsibilities, right? So yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. do you know, just take a, as much advantage of you know this time as possible. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I do, you know, um, agree with what what you're uh, with what you said about freedom and stuff. So, um, and just to move on, um, you mentioned that you graduated uni in 2021 right but you yep. started like webflow and all of that stuff a lot you know before that so mm -hmm. i'm guessing that you know you had to balance uni and freelance work and youtube i'm guessing as well so mm -hmm. yeah. tell me how that went oh, because you know i'm currently <laughs> in uni i'm currently yeah. in uni and i know it's crazy so i want to you know mm -hmm. hear your perspective about it yeah i mean i was okay so a little backstory me i've always i've always um prioritize real life work over over university mm -hmm. and i think the best way to learn the skills that university is trying to teach you is to actually get immersed in the work and to actually mm -hmm. do a shitty project for a cheap client because then you're going to learn you'll learn more from that cheap um client than you will in three years at university i guarantee you you know it's true and yeah one of the things that that was so prevalent to me was the the idea of of uni or at least the way the way it was at, at my uni is people would um graduate and three months later they would finally achieve an intern position you know and at least that's just the way that it was at, at my at my school maybe it was my course or whatever but that's just the mm -hmm. way that 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 i saw it and in my mind, or not in my mind, but like in my reality, I was already taking in clients, making a couple thousand here and there. I was already, I already saw like a possible future in freelancing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the idea was, or like the vision was, okay, if I focus on building a YouTube channel that will get me more clients or get me exposure for freelancing, that's already making me money. Why the fuck <laughs> would I care so much about uni? to mm -hmm. get into like a lower paying internship you know it just doesn't make mm -hmm. any sense and there was a point like right like right when COVID happened where i i got accepted for an in for an internship at an industrial design firm and then COVID hit so 
the best thing that ever happened to me was actually not getting that internship because it allowed me to start YouTube. It allowed me to like develop all these skills mm -hmm. of like speaking and, and being like this persona, you know? And so one of the things that, that I've always, I've always preached about is actually doing freelance work and doing client work for, for others. And you'll learn more from that than you ever will from university. And so um, to get back to your question, the, mm -hmm. the way that I balanced everything was I put more care and interest into meeting YouTube deadlines than I did into meeting university deadlines, right? And in the end, that affected my, my grade, my, um, my final mm -hmm. year. You know, in the end, I got a 2-2, you know, which is it's okay. awful. But at the end of the day, I left university with a a near six figure freelance contract with a two two and other people left university with hopes of getting an internship, you know? So mm. it's, I just prioritize what I think would work out for me. I put all my mm. chips on black, <laughs> you know, and in the end it worked out, thank God, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, but it was definitely, it was definitely something that, uh, was, was difficult in the moment because, you have to, or I had to really th like believe in myself and like think that it would work and like be honest with myself and like, thank God it worked out. But, but that's more or less how I, how I balance things, you know? Right. Yeah. And, um, that, that, that's, that's crazy. It's like you, you focused, you know, everyone else was, you know, they, they thought they were doing the right thing, you know, because that's what, you know, I'm guessing the mm -hmm. uni of society tells them to do you know, focus on your grades course, or whatever. Yeah. But then you got the actual experience. You're like one step ahead of everyone. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you focus on getting the experience first and, you know, being in the trenches of doing projects. And that mm -hmm. helped you land that six-figure deal, which is crazy. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and I, th I think I think it's, a, you know, a bit different for, for myself. Like, I... Because you your course was in industry design right so it was like design related but for me it's like I do dentistry which is like nothing related to design so it's like two whole different worlds I have to balance yeah but um, yeah, you can, yeah I do cover it with what you're saying like <laughs> yeah you can't go and like, freelancing for dentistry you know <laughs> yeah man it's, it's, it's insane it's um it's like you have to you have to have two different brains two different whole mindsets and mm -hmm. like when, when you step in uni you're a different person when you're in you know, sitting on this chair, you know, doing, you know, freelancing is a whole different, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be a whole different person. And um, I do correlate with what you're saying. Like, um, when, e even when I was in sixth form, like I was, you know, everyone else was like focusing on their grades and I was like, all right, cool. Like grades is one thing, but I, I, I wanted like experience, you know, like experiencing, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. talking, communicating, you know, I remember in school, we used to learn about how to talk and all of this shit. Yeah. It's like, you know, why Why am I learning how to talk? Why don't I just go out and talk and then learn from there, right? It's like learn from mm -hmm. doing rather than learn from a book. And um, yep. yeah, I know I, I know what you mean. And, you know, you, you were kind of um, lucky in that sense that you kind of realized that early and yep. um, you, you know, landed that six-figure deal where everyone else was doing it. That's, that's, that's insane. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just got, uh, because, you know, I... I think I mentioned this a couple of times, but we're both very young, right? And it's like, sometimes I feel like being young, especially in this, uh, you know, I, th I think in this industry where like experience is valued so highly, it's like yep. being young is kind of, it kind of works against you in some ways. Like, and yeah, I wanted definitely. to ask you like, how, how do you, how much do you find that to be true? Um, Very true, you know, but a lot of the times clients see that as, okay, one, he might be inexperienced, but two, because of the industry that we're in, you know, Webflow is such a new thing and it's such a, um, if you're good, then it doesn't matter who you are kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, then it, your work speaks for itself. You know, um, I've, I've been with clients where they're like, they did pull that like seniority shit on me. Mm -hmm. And then I have had clients where they don't give a shit about how old you are and they don't know how old I am and they don't really care because the work I'm putting out is, is good. And that's all that, that's all that matters at the end of the day. That's all they mm -hmm. care about. And so it's almost like, it's almost like a double-edged sword because in a lot of cases you are more senior and you do have more knowledge than 
people that are older than you and maybe the people that, that mm-hmm. you're um, that you're talking to at the, the company or whoever you're freelancing for. But at the end of the day, if you're an expert and if you know what you're talking about, then it doesn't it doesn't matter. You know, it, this isn't mm-hmm. like like I'm imagining uh, being a doctor is where it's super like I'm older than you. I know more mm-hmm. I've been in the field, more I have more experience. And it's thank God it's not like that because <laughs> I wouldn't be anywhere, mm-hmm. you know, but um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't found it to be to be super true although i have had Mm -hmm. instances with it for sure yeah and um i think another point of you know another kind of con of being young is like Mm -hmm. um your your kind of friends and people your age is like and i found this to be true and i want to ask you if it's true right so it's like people my age their focuses are not the same focus as as mine it's like but i'm not sure Mm -hmm. that's true for you because you were in like the design industry right but for me, it's like mm-hmm. nobody ever, you know, especially my age, like all of my friends when I was in sixth form or whatever, right? None of them were really thinking about starting a business or like doing something, um, you know, that will give them some monetary value, for example, or kind of learn a skill or, you know, start something, right? And um, mm-hmm. be- and everyone else was focusing on, you know, you know, the, the normal thing that young people focus on, you know, just having fun and all of that stuff, right? Yeah. And um, I think I found that a bit difficult where it's like, imagine everyone around you their goals are completely different to yours like everyone else wants to have fun whereas you kind of want to mm-hmm. you know be a bit more serious and start making money or whatever right and yeah. um i think perhaps you can relate to that so why don't you talk to me a little bit more about that and stuff mm-hmm. dude absolutely you're like you're speaking my language here um i started a i started my i'm saying this in quotes here people can't see this but mm-hmm. i started my entrepreneurial uh, journey mm-hmm. when i was like 13 or something. Um, mm-hmm. I started a sticker business in my classroom and I would wow. go around asking people like what designs they wanted. And then I'd go home <laughs> with my like color printer and I'd, and I'd print it on like this, um, this like sticker paper that I could get at the store for like mm-hmm. two euros or mm-hmm. whatever. And that's sort of where it started. And when I, when I first made those, like those hundred euros, you know, I was fucking hooked. <laughs> I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> you know, like, I wasn't thinking about like, oh my god, I'm gonna take over the mm-hmm. world. But I was like, like, you know, like some some side money here. I can build my own computer because mm-hmm. that's what I was into at the time. I can do all these things. I can buy some football boots. You know, I can do all these things. Mm-hmm. And from then, I started thinking more about like um, building my own clothing brand because at the time, you know, it was like when Supreme was in its heyday and all of these brands mm-hmm. were like coming up. And I was like, just like this like 15 year old super obsessed with it. And one of the things that that I that I started to do was I created a clothing brand when I was like 15, if I can say that, 15, 16, maybe. And I mean, I think it's still up, but I'm, but I'm not going to mention it because it's just awful. <laughs> but I um, I started a clothing brand and I started selling it and I started learning about Google ads, Facebook ads, um, mm-hmm. building Shopify sites, things like that when I was really, really young and when I was failing in school and um you know, it was it was the same thing that happened in uni. You know, I was more focused about the real world and how can I take this to the next level rather than like focusing on like my math grade and focusing on like mm-hmm. my English grade or whatever. And so when I was doing that, a lot of people around me, all my friends, they were also into having fun, going to clubs, going to parties, things like that. Mm-hmm. And I definitely did my fair share of that. But at the time, my main focus mm-hmm. was growing that clothing brand and growing. Yeah growing this business that i just started out of out of nothing um and so kind of ming mingling <laughs> kind of talking with friends and yeah um being in that group you, you start to like not relate as much you know b- because you start prioritizing going to um going to clothing stores and focusing on new designs and doing all these things and not going to the party, you know, and you start to mm-hmm. like miss out on things and you start to, you know, you, you slowly start to separate. And that's sort of where, where I stopped, where I stopped um, understanding the other side. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where I feel like I can yeah. relate to you a lot here. It's like you want to do one thing and people don't see it. And, you know, their parents tell them that, starting a business is a dumb idea and my parents told me mm-hmm. that, but, fuck it. <laughs> but um 
the thing is like you you have your goals you believe in yourself and then other people will eventually come come and see and then they'll be like oh my god he actually did it and mm -hmm. hopefully that happens at some point in life <laughs> yeah and uh i think i think that's so true what you said like the gaps just start getting bigger and bigger you know mm -hmm. between you know you just you just to the point where you just lost touch of their mindset like you literally do not understand what they're talking about and i think that happened for me when i was in lockdown like at the start of lockdown you know i could relate to them a little bit although i wanted to do my own thing but then during the entire length of lockdown i was so focused on like starting my my thing and mm -hmm. then when i you know met up with the same people after lockdown it's like yeah, dude. who are you like <laughs> but um yeah i mm -hmm. completely related to 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 uh what you're saying and I, th I think that's like a big problem for us young people and like and i think like for for people who are like 30 i think they will not really have this problem because when you're 30 everyone around you is working trying to do something uh, mm -hmm. most people are anyways like doing jobs or whatever so yeah. i think that's like a major problem for us young people and i think that's one thing that i always always like wanted to do when I, you know whenever i get the chance like i want to um i think it's, it's like something intrinsic inside of me that wants me to do it right it's like i want to encourage young people to like i want i want to show them you know that you know getting a job and doing mm -hmm. this and like being going to a miserable nine to five is not the only way i want i want i want to show them that you know there's so many ways that you know whatever you can do like all you have to do is learn a skill find a skill that you enjoy firstly learn it become an expert and then go from there and mm -hmm. i think a lot of young people just don't see it and want to kind of open their eyes in a way and yeah. um yeah i think yeah this is definitely a problem mm -hmm. for us uh young people um so j just to move on real quick um i wanted to ask yeah. you um just about you know because you, you had quite an extensive journey like you were in uni and then you touched into the freelancer space and you know you're still in it and then you're also in the content industry which is you know <laughs> you're balancing a lot of things right and um, a lot, yeah. i wanted to ask mm -hmm. you like what, what are some of the major lessons that you learned along the way whether it's to do with content freelancing or mm -hmm. anything of the sort yeah, I've got some good ones. Um, the main one and the the first one is is this ah, fuck, I don't know how to say it in, in English, but because I'm like I'm Spanish, right? So I have like a saying mm -hmm. that my mom says that makes a lot of mm -hmm. sense in, in Spanish, but it doesn't in English. But it basically translates to um to you already have the no, like the answer no, you know. Mm -hmm. And the 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 basic connotations of that and the idea of that is primarily like if you go and ask someone for a favor they mm -hmm. already like you already have the idea that they're going to say no to you know so you have nothing to lose mm -hmm. you know all you have to do is go and ask them and you might get a yes and the mm -hmm. idea of that that connotation is is pretty much how i started my channel <laughs> pretty much the idea of how i got into a lot of things in my life you know it's like you have nothing to lose essentially so all you have to do is go and ask someone to help you out and most of the time people are really friendly people want to help each other and mm -hmm. at the end of the day they will help you you know so one of one of the main lessons that that i learned from youtube and from from creating content is also about consistency you know a lot of my videos in the start were pretty shit and i'll say that without without any remorse because they're a lot better now but um one of the main lessons there is you have to just be consistent with with youtube and please the youtube gods by posting at least once a week mm -hmm. in order to grow and in order to stay relevant and in order to like increase your likelihood of of exploding and you know as as like trapped as that sounds it's really not that bad you know because mm -hmm. at least the way the way that i've created my content creating life i've molded it around one outsourcing editing so that's out of my out of my face to making content that i find enjoyable so it's it's mm -hmm. fun for me to to sit down in a few hours and, and record a a tutorial on on webflow or figma or whatever i'm doing so as do anything you can whatever you can do to stay consistent to always be posting to always be active in the community reply to comments things like that because that's the thing that matters the most, you know? Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, it will, it will feel like a task and it will feel like, 
holy shit, I have to record in, in a week and next week and the week after that. If you get into things like batching, if you get into also mm-hmm. just enjoying the content that you make, it, it doesn't really feel like work, you know? And at the end of the day, it's the, the work itself is so much better than other works that you could be doing, like at a nine to five, at an office, whatever. And so even putting in that, that one week of work or that one day of work is nothing compared to the other side of, of the world, you know, and the other, like the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, you know, so those are some of the major lessons that you learn, right? Like the stuff that you recommend doing. Now Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, what are the stuff or what are the things that you recommend not doing to, you know, the freelancers or content creators? Mm. One of the things I think is going to be, burning out (laughs) i don't recommend burning Mm. out um and so that that goes pretty much hand in hand with with what i was saying earlier you know it's do Mm. whatever you can to be consistent and that goes hand in hand with doing that at a long long time so you want to be consistent Mm -hmm. at a long time if that means one week you need to record two three four videos just so that for the next three four weeks you don't have to do anything well then do that you know if that's mm-hmm. the way that, that it works best for you, and if that's the way that that your brain can allow itself to relax, well then, well then you seem to push that one week, and then for the next three weeks you're you're coasting, you know. So, mm-hmm. above all, that's that's the main thing I recommend not doing. As like crude as that sounds, if you want to make it in the in the YouTube game, and I haven't made it yet, you know, but that's that's what's worked for me so far. Um, mm-hmm. that's what I would recommend you don't do because <laughs> catastrophic results yeah. will come from that. Just, yeah, plan, 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 right? Um, mm-hmm. And I think <laughs> that, that's a lot. I shouldn't be saying this, but this is a problem that I have as well Like with, with this channel. It's like we always, mm-hmm. you know, me and Vermarlin, you know, we are guilty of doing that. Like we don't really batch content. I know, I know we should. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I totally agree. Definitely saves a lot of time. Like I do... You know, one thing that I do batch is my LinkedIn content. And that's a yeah. life, you know, as a life, you know, changer. It's like, um, all, all, all you have to do is just create, you know, that's what I, I just do on the weekends, right? Saturday, create a bunch of content, post it whenever you want. And uh, yeah, definitely, guys, like that, 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 that's, that's like a major tip for you. If you, you know, mm-hmm. whatever content is like YouTube, LinkedIn, whatever, right? Um, mm-hmm. So just, just like to, you know, I want to talk a little bit more about Webflow real quick. So Webflow, um, they, I think, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to say this, but I was on like one of the enterprise calls like last week and um, they're in the enterprise partner calls and they were mentioning about their plans and stuff like that, right? So I, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you quickly, like, what do you firstly, obviously, you know, we all know what you think about Webflow is great, right? But what do you think the future is for Webflow and I think I was discussing you know this with Koista a lot yesterday we were talking mm-hmm. about Webflow in the future and we were saying stuff like I don't we don't think that they're gonna um j- you know go into the e-commerce side of things like I think Shopify is the king there I doubt mm-hmm. Webflow will ever take over you know Shopify in terms of e-commerce um so like what, what, what do you think the future is for webflow like do you think it's gonna just get mm-hmm. bigger and better or do you think eventually something's gonna take over <clears throat> well i feel that there's a few different uh, sides to this right like the mm-hmm. the e-commerce side for example <clears throat> Sorry. the e-commerce side for example um the thing that shopify is going for it is how easy it is to start you know mm-hmm. when i first started my my clothing brand that's what i used because it was like the easiest thing all it was it was like Thirty dollars a month or something, and and you are up and running. And mm-hmm. the the benefit of of that side of things is that it's like click and go, you know, click and plug and play. And that comes with templates, that comes with um, integrated uh, Printify, integrated Mailchimp, things like that. If Webflow wanted to in the future, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to create a sub brand of Webflow to accommodate that those users you know those users mm. that just want to like like okay i have an idea like an etsy type idea i want to make bracelets okay here's a thing here's a i mean here's a template here's a mailchimp here's a um, a way that you can start and i don't see mm-hmm. why they wouldn't be able to do that in the future you know again i do think shopify has all the seo they have all of the the marketing 
they've they've been king for for years now so it'll be it wouldn't be the easiest thing in the world but templates are something that that webflow could start um integrating directly into their system integrating directly into the way that e-commerce is is created in in their platform because right now if if i was just starting out and i had a a t-shirt company for example and i wanted to to create a website it would be the most daunting thing in the world to to first have to learn a web development tool to be able to sell mm-hmm. my t-shirts like that would just be ridiculous so i think mm-hmm. if they want to stay king in the e-commerce game what they need to do here's me like suggesting <laughs> what they should do <laughs> but what they need to do is create an editor style platform you know the the editor and webflow where it's it's for the clients primarily and then you create something like that for people that want to integrate e-commerce and want to build an mm-hmm. e-commerce uh, brand because then it, it's more client friendly it's more it's easier just to dive in you know you don't have to learn a bunch of a bunch of stuff um but yeah other other than other than e-commerce you know i think without like going too much in into webflow i do think that they will be king for a long time i know their competitors like wix and stuff are, are trying to keep up but from what I've heard, their platform isn't great. It's really buggy. So for now, mm-hmm. Webflow is is the champion. Um, the the thing that that throws a lot of people off is the pricing. I do see the pricing mm-hmm. being like too expensive. But it's also directed towards people that are making a lot of money already. You know, it's it's like mm-hmm. the the brands that they showcase on their on their homepage. Even it's like um, Pedal, for example, right? A a banking company. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, <laughs> like this is, are you saying that this is for banks then? Are you saying that this is for people that only make millions of dollars? You know, I think that's something that ne- they might need to work on if they want to mm-hmm. appeal more to the to the Shopify clients and the Shopify mm-hmm. uh, users because those are like, okay, I have $300 to start this. What do I do? How do I start? And mm-hmm. maybe that's not appealing to them because it's like a smaller, it's a smaller ticket, you know, but at the end of the day, if if that's where the the majority of of users are coming from, then it might it might be a a smart way to to go down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, I, I I do agree with that. Like, um, Webflow does mention a lot about you know they want their, like they want their platform to be for everyone, but I do hear mm-hmm. where you're coming from. Like, you know, you know the pricing is a bit high. So is that really true, or you know? Yeah. They they they're, they're kind of targeting. Um, they say that they wanted to be for everyone, but they're kind of targeting higher paying brands and stuff like that, right? Or companies yeah. rather. Um, but also, you know, just to add to that, um, just to give my, uh, just just to talk about the technical side of Webflow, it's like I think mm-hmm. Webflow. I always like to use this analogy. Like they they kind of like they're very similar to Apple in a way, where they you know they have, you know, they're very late to features. <laughs> like just mm-hmm. like apple is you know like face id you know apple released face id a lot after you know samsung already had it right so i think webflow is a lot like apple where they they know that the features are out there for example you know cms slider like why can i not build yeah. a cms slider <laughs> yes fin, fin yeah. suite is great right like fin suite attributes mm-hmm. but why can i not build a cms slider natively and 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 i'm not sure why webflow doesn't have that feature just the same way i think when i have my iphone it's like why doesn't it have this feature like Mm -hmm. other products do whatever right and i think what they do what they do is they i think i'm not really sure why i think it's 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 because mostly um it's it's, it is a closed um uh, system where it's like on on like wordpress which is an open source system so you can Mm -hmm. you know wordpress there's a lot of plugins and stuff but with webflow you cannot do that so um yeah man i just i just hope i just hope you know they uh what i would love is perhaps they are perhaps they get a lot more responsive and they kind of listen to the features the 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 feature requests a lot faster and get updates yeah. a lot faster because mm-hmm. right now you know they are releasing updates but they're not big jumps right and i kind of want <laughs> them to you know start having these features that you know otherwise i you know a, a non webflow developer would think that they must have it right they must have it like a cms slider mm-hmm. why don't you have it yeah but um yeah i think if webflow catches up with that i think i think that would definitely change the game um mm-hmm. so yeah awesome uh, so just to quickly end off i just got a quick question for you um 
what is the future plans for yourself is it more content is it you know what what are you planning to do in the year 2022 2022 um i plan on reducing freelance work i plan on mm -hmm. growing youtube scaling that shit to the fucking moon um making that my primary source of income and traveling awesome just like that great <laughs> very simple straight to the point i love that as there you go this was episode 19 with Arno ross you know we learned a lot in this um episode about content especially we did learn a lot a lot about content um so yeah guys hopefully you did enjoy this video if you did make sure you leave a like again everything um you know that you can find about Arno is going to be in the description so his youtube channel his website his instagram linkedin whatever is all going to be in the description make sure to check him out on my twitter subscribe <laughs> your twitter as well for sure yeah. and uh yeah guys if you did enjoy the video make sure you leave a like if you have any questions or comments make sure you drop a comment and make sure that you subscribe we're close to around 200 subscribers so please make sure that you subscribe and turn on the bell notification button so you don't miss out on future videos all right guys thank you very much for listening and we'll catch you next week bye bye